Okay, so it's uh, Jason and Phil uh, at the Centre for Computing History, and we have got working uh, a paper punch tape uh, machine. When I say we have got this working, uh, I actually mean Phil's got it working. I had nothing to do with it. Um, uh, so anyway, yeah, Phil, tell us uh, what we've got here. Right, what we've got here is a GN Telematic 4601 paper tape punch and reader unit. And this dates from about 1982. It's capable cool. of punching and reading five and eight hole tape. Um, normally it would be connected between a computer, probably a remote one via a modem, and a local terminal. So you could punch data or not, depending on whether you needed to. In this case, we've got it hooked up to a much more modern computer running MS-DOS. Nice. Because that was easy. <laughs> so you've written some code um, actually on the laptop in what, C? Uh, this was written in C. Uh, we had Ball and Turbo C, because that's what I know. Um, yeah, it basically displays a little screen where you can learn a little bit about punch tape, um, decode any tape you might happen to have lying around. Oh, nice. It's quite nice. Mm -hmm. And maybe punch a little bit of tape if you feel so. Cool. So the, the connection from the laptop to the reader? Yeah, it's serial. a standard serial link. Obviously, the laptop's got a 9-pin port here. Uh, this being older equipment, it's got 25-pin D subconnectors, uh, one going to the data terminal equipment, which would be your keyboard and probably a VDU, given it was the early 80s, and another one of the opposite gender going off to a modem, which would connect you to your remote computer system. Cool. So you didn't need to do anything other than just connect the laptop to this, just straight wired cable. There's no sort of interface. Straight wired cable, um, no active electronics in here at all. We did have to fiddle with the dip switches on the bottom uh, to switch it into five hole tape mode, because that's what we've got most of. Uh, and I think also adjust the parity settings. But otherwise it was, it was pretty much plug and play. Except it wasn't. No, there was a lot of swearing involved. <laughs> You've done a huge amount of coding to get it to work. I mean, so um, the fonts that we've, that we've got it printed out, which we'll show you in a second, um, that took a little bit of um, time and effort. Yeah, normally, of course, it would print straight binary, uh, one row of holes for each character. Uh, but that's not very exciting to look at. So we wanted to print out a little bit of stuff in binary and then the same data horizontally so you could hold up the light and read it which of course is not how it would work back in the day. That would be mm. utterly unintelligible to a computer, but it's pretty cool to look at today. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, actually, they, they did do back in the day anyway. So they, they labelled up... Tape uh, identification, yeah. you could, or in fact, often did uh, have, I suppose, horizontal text at the beginning and end of the tape. So if it unravelled and you had to figure out what it was, uh, you could uh, do that easily. Yeah, yeah. So, come on in. Let's have a look. Let's get it working. See it in action? Mm -hmm. Why not? Some hot sprocket action. <laughs> that was Phil's gag. There you go. It's the standard welcome message. Hello world. Awesome. And there we have it. I don't know how well that holds up against Actually, the desk. Yeah, yeah, you can see that's pretty cool. Hello world on the left. And this section here on the right is the same text in binary. In this case, it's 5-bit murraybore.code. Cool. Which ultimately derives, well, from the, I think, 1860s uh, telegram code. Right. A bit of history nice. to it. Nice. Uh, but this would have been used for teletypes, uh, for telegrams, of course, way before computers, uh, but also for program storage in the 60s and 70s. Uh, this Dates from the 80s, presumably people were still using it then. Yeah. yeah. They carried on for quite a long time. Yeah, I don't think there's any computers today that still use it. Uh, mm. Some CNC machines, I think, are still programmed by tape, <laughs> or they've got adapters in place to talk yeah. to more modern computers. So it's, it's an obsolete data storage system, but... But very cool. I mean, the, yeah. the sound of that punching is just... Oh, it's, awesome. it's a very physical machine. It shakes the desk. <laughs> Uh, larger computers, of course, had punch cards, which was effectively the same thing. Mm. The original tape, of course, going back to uh, the original looms way back in the Jacquard loom, mm. uh, were punch cards taped together mm -hmm. to form a continuous chain. So. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, Phil. Yeah, that's it.